So now that we understand a little bit about the control setup, let's just talk about how the long-term fuel trim works. Now, it's important to note that the long-term fuel trim is essentially based on what the short-term fuel trim does. Now, short-term fuel trim, like I said before, is simply the O2 control. So, once we're in the long-term fuel trim tab, you'll see that there's quite a few settings. Uh, we've got the activation point and the activation timer. Now, these things are a little bit difficult to understand for the first time, so we'll talk about that a little. The activation point, that is simply the, the amount of trim that the short-term trim needs to do before the long-term trim gets involved. And the activation timer, well, that's how long the short-term trim is happening for before the long-term trim gets involved. So let's just discuss that a little. Basically, what I've got in this setup here is my activation point is 3%. What does that mean? Well, simply, it means that the short-term fuel trim needs to be doing at least 3% trim before the long-term trim is going to get involved. It needs to be doing that for at least 30 seconds before the long-term trim gets involved. Now, the next couple of settings, uh, that is the increment, the period, the max trim, and, then, and the max trim per session, again, these are all specific to the long-term fuel trim. So the increment, that is, when the long-term fuel trim actually gets enabled, this is how much it trims in the first point. So in this case, I've said half a percent. The period, well, that's how long between these increment points. Then there is the max trim and the max trim per session. So the way that the long-term fuel trim works, it breaks everything down into little mini sessions. That mini session is as long as the activation timer. So in this case, the mini session is 30 seconds. So the maximum amount of trim that's going to happen in that mini session is two and a half percent because that's the maximum amount of trim per session. So in 30 seconds, the maximum trim that it's going to happen is two and a half percent. What that gives is gives the engine a little bit of time to actually stabilize and for the, the control system to work out, is this trim actually trimming the engine? Is it trimming it enough? And lets everything settle down a little bit. Okay, so we've got some limits. There's the lower RPM, the medium RPM, and and the high RPM and, and the lower load, the medium load and the high load. Basically, the way that this uh, long-term fuel trim works is it doesn't trim everything in the map the same. There is basically the low RPM, low load, the medium RPM and the medium load and then the high RPM and the high load. So essentially you set up three different windows for long-term fuel trim. Now, if you're using a narrowband O2 sensor, again, comes back to the target air fuel ratio map. With a narrow band, if the target air fuel ratio is anything other than lambda of 1 or 14.7 to 1 air fuel ratio, then none of this is going to happen because you're not targeting lambda 1. Now if you have a wide band air fuel ratio, then you can actually set up these trims to, to, to trim the engine um, at the high and the medium load setups, even if you're not targeting lambda 1. That's because you're using a wideband O2 sensor. Remembering, that's very important to note. If you are using a narrowband O2 sensor, then these corrections won't be made if you're not targeting 14.7 to 1. Now you see that there is limits in place here. There's the low RPM, the low load limit, medium RPM and medium load limit, and then the high RPM and the high load limit. Basically what we're doing with these is we're setting up windows. So for example, in between low RPM and medium RPM. Now in my case I've got 1200 through to 3500. That's going to be one window. So essentially that's that's the low limit. In between 1200 and 3500 RPM, that's our low window for RPM. Again the same with the low between minus 20 and 20 kPa. Now that's our low window. It's the same between the medium and the high and then the high point and above is, is essentially our high window. So that makes a little bit of sense of what those limits mean we have actually three different long-term fuel trims. So we have you know, the low long-term, the medium long-term, and the high long-term. You can actually view each of these trims individually, if you like, simply by clicking on any of the text boxes and selecting long-term fuel trim, low, medium, or high. Now, because the long-term fuel trim is based on the short-term fuel trim, or the O2 control, if the conditions in the O2 control tab are not being met, of course, no long-term fuel trim will be happening either. Well, there you have it.
a very brief introduction on the setup of the long term and short term fuel trims on the Platinum Pro plug in ECU. For more information, feel free to register for one of our seminars where you can ask questions on this topic and many more. Well, for now, that's all we have time for, so we'll see you next time on Technically Speaking.